My colleagues and I from Brown Rudnick are truly honored to represent the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp. For nearly 30 years, Mr. Depp built a reputation, a respected artist whose name was associated with success. Today, his name is associated with a lie, a false statement uttered by the defendant, Amber Heard. It's a case about how devastating words can be when they are false. Under the law, a person who makes a false statement about someone else can be held responsible. That's because words matter. Specifically, the words that she used in an op-ed published in the Washington Post in December 2018. And the op-ed was published, and this is no accident, the evidence will show, no one had ever in five decades accused Johnny Depp of being violent with a woman. And no one had even suggested ever that he was capable of something like this. By choosing to lie about her husband for her own personal benefit, Amber Heard forever changed Mr. Depp's life and reputation. The world, or at least the entertainment world, has been waiting for a long time for the trial between Amber and Johnny to come. And now that it's here, a lot of people are curious about what's going to happen next, mainly because the narrative has been leaning to one side for quite some time. But now, Depp is getting his side of the story told, and that includes him going on the witness stand himself in order to testify about what really happened in his marriage to Heard. We'll break it down for you, but before we do that, go ahead and do us a favor by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the bell icon so you never miss an upload from us. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video. Do you want to win an iPhone 12? Maybe a MacBook Pro? How about $500 cash? All you have to do is comment the secret hidden message somewhere in this video. That's it. Oh, and leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep affording these giveaways. Winner will be announced at the last day of each month. Thanks for watching and good luck. Number four, Johnny's Quest. We do appreciate those who got that pun. At least a few of you who got it, we hope. But regardless of the joke, it was no joke that Johnny finally got to do his own bit of speaking on the record. And not surprisingly, he was quick and to the point about what he wanted there. Truth is the only thing I'm interested in. Lies will get you nowhere, but lies built upon lies built upon lies, Deb said. I'm obsessed with the truth. If you really think about it, why wouldn't he be? For years now, he's been hearing via various medias that he's a monster and a beer and that he deserves what he's getting. But he's been adamant since the start that he's been innocent, even when the world turned against him for the most part. Under questioning from his own lawyer, Depp denied that he'd ever been violent with Heard or with any other woman, something that many, including his former partners, friends, and more have said. Only Amber has said she's been a bead by Johnny. Heard accused Depp of striking her, choking her, and kicking her on several occasions over the course of their relationship. She has also alleged that Depp once sexually assaulted her during a fight in Australia in 2015, though ironically that last accusation only came during this trial during the opening arguments. And of course, Heard wrote an op-ed that said she was a bead in a key relationship and insinuated that it was Depp, and Johnny went to work immediately to try and stop those lines from being widespread. I felt it my responsibility to stand up not only for myself in that instance, but stand up for my children, Depp testified, speaking very deliberately on the witness stand. I thought it was diabolical that my children would have to go to school and have their friends or people in the school approach them with the infamous People magazine cover with Miss Heard with a dark bruise on her face. Depp said the allegations against him were quite heinous and disturbing and not based in any species of truth. It's very strange when one day you were Cinderella, and in 0.6 seconds, you're Quasimodo, he said, and I didn't deserve that, nor did my children, nor did the people who believed in me for all these years. I don't want anybody to believe that I had done them wrong, or that I had lied to them, or that I was a fraud. And you can understand why that is for Depp. He was a very popular actor, beloved by many for his zany acting, and yet his ability to portray serious roles just as well. And sure enough, once the AB allegations started to fly, everything started to change in the minds of both fans, critics, and Hollywood execs. This is why his quest is truly one for truth, because in the case, the truth can literally set him free from the shackles that he's been put in during these last few years. Number three, what he said about Amber Heard. Johnny talked about the beginning of his relationship with Heard, saying, quote, it was as if she was too good to be true. And ironically, it was, no matter what side you're on. But their whirlwind romance is the stuff of legend and nightmares. They fell in love on a movie set and moved mountains to be together. And at first, it was a apparently really good. She was attentive, she was loving, she was smart, she was kind, 
She was funny. She was understanding, he said. He added that they shared a common interest in blues music and that Heard would often take his boots off when he returned home, loving things indeed, something that no doubt many couples had and wanted to continue. But ironically, it was the routine that Heard tried to set with Johnny that started to show her true colors. The moment he broke that routine, even though it was to help Amber at times, she went off on him. Within a year and a half, he said, it was as if she had become another person almost. He also reiterated that he never hurt her physically. I never struck Miss Heard in that way, nor have I struck any woman in my life. He testified, adding that, quote, her accusations sort of permeated the industry. As we noted before, that is indeed what happened. He gave up prominent roles because of her words. But despite that, he's endured and tried to keep going. And it was in his testimony that he revealed the biggest reason why he would never physically AB a woman. Because he was the victim of physical AB himself. And it was by the hands of his own mother. Number 2. Childhood Trauma The actor said his late mother, Betty Sue Palmer, was violent and cruel to him when growing up. To the point where he, quote, tried to stay out of the line of fire where she was concerned. Something that no child or teen should have to deal with. And yet he did. The verbal AB, the psychological AB, was almost worse than the beatings. The beatings were just physical pain. The physical pain you learn to deal with. You learn to accept it. You learn to deal with it, said Depp. Some of the violence Palmer inflicted, Depp alleged, included throwing an ashtray, a high-heeled shoe, or a telephone. He said she would hit her children in their heads and had the ability to be as cruel as anyone can be. Again, something no child should have to deal with. And if you're wondering where was Depp's father in all of this, he answered that too. Depp recounted that his father, John Depp Sr., is a very kind, quiet, and shy man and not a confrontational person in any way. The actor continued, And when Betty Sue, my mother, would go off on a tangent toward my father, and of course in front of the kids, it didn't matter to her, he amazingly remained very stoic, and never, as she was rationing him with horrible things, he stood there and just looked at her while she delivered the pain, and he swallowed it. He took it. Depp went on to say that there was never a moment when my father lost control and attacked my mother, or hit my mother, or even said a bad thing to my mother. The things that I witnessed, there were a couple of times when it got too far, when I could see his eyes welling up as he was staring at her, saying nothing, the Pirates of the Caribbean star said. The most he would do is he would punch a wall. I once saw him punch a wall and he shattered his hand because it wasn't drywall, it was proper concrete. But still, never touched her, never argued with her, he remained a gentleman. To me, as a five-year-old boy, I kept wondering, why does he take it? Why does he take this? And why doesn't he leave her? But he didn't, Depp added. He was able to maintain his calm and his composure. He was able to maintain his relationship with his children. He's a good man. Number one, understanding. When it comes to cases of AB, the big things that people need to have context for is the positions of both people. Because the AB is usually so traumatized that they don't want to talk about it until they can't take it no more. And typically, the AB is someone who's broken mentally and feels it's their right to do what they do, even though that's emphatically wrong. With this case, all we've heard is Amber's words about what happened and many took that at face value. But now, through both Johnny's words and the testimony of others, we're seeing that this narrative was wrong. Johnny had every reason and motive not to harm Amber, but Amber had multiple reasons to do A-B tactics to Johnny, and many have noted it, including Depp himself. So while Johnny's testimony is not over yet, it is already painting a picture of what he went through and how things aren't always what they appear just because one person pointed a finger. And there you have it, everyone, a look at the latest on Johnny's testimony and what might come next. Did his words move you in regards to his own trauma and what he went through? What else do you think he's going to reveal before his time on the stand is done? How will Amber Heard try and counter what he said? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.